First of all, my Jew is always out. I mean, like, I wear this thing right here, this yarmulke. I Don't take it, it off. You're going to lose your Jew powers. Well, for exactly. For those two seconds right there, I was vulnerable. But fortunately, I'm in the it's, protection of my protocols of the elders. I picture it fortress. like a tea kettle where you take it on the steam goes out only it's pure cash for the Jews. <laughs> that's, well, that, that, that's why I only take it off in the privacy of my own home. I don't want to share that cash. No, me. of course not. So glad to bring on our next guest. We finally have him on, and uh, he's a, a lawyer, a scholar, and a gentleman. Ben Shapiro, glad to have you with us. Yeah, glad to be here. Just sorry I can't see you. Stephen, because that was going to make my evening, of course. Yes, of course, I know. Well, right now I have this horrible homeless beard, and not gay Jared's going to be fired, of course, for the technical difficulties. You know, it's funny, Ben, we've had so many requests for you to be on, like, why haven't, I'm going, well, actually, Ben Shapiro was on this show before it was a show, when it was just a YouTube channel, you were on to talk about um, primetime propaganda, remember that? Oh, yeah, I mean, listen, Stephen, you and I go all the way back to, to you actually trying out your Brazilian headlocks on me in my condo. And you had a hernia. I did have a hernia. You had a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> I remember not that. Gay Jared is, not gay Jared is the second gayest thing. <laughs> well, that's because you, well, no, what ended up being gayer is you went with Krav Maga instead, which uh, is just. Uh, that's true. It's just that a, didn't work out. No, well, it's, yeah. it's just. That, a, that lasted for like six weeks. <laughs> and then I was, was talking about this today. I have been getting just a rash of anti Semitic <laughs> comments. Um, and, I, and, and I'm not Jewish. Well, if you if you were, you'd automatically be the center on the Jewish basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Gary Goldman has that bit about uh, telling how they had a reinforced rim at the Jewish Cultural Center. And he's like, um, there have been two broken rims in the history of the NBA, not one from a four foot nine <laughs> Jewish boy. Exactly. Um, have you been getting? Have you noticed a big uptick oh. in this? Oh my God! Well, it, it really only started when I started becoming critical of Trump. So my my original view of Trump was that he wasn't conservative, but he was hitting some of the right people. So I was enjoying him hitting a lot of the but right I people. Remember that. I remember that. Yeah. I remember being like, what? I, thinking it was odd because I, I said those same things, but you seemed more emphatically pro-Trump. Um, but No, I mean, it really, it really wasn't that I was emphatically pro-Trump. Right. I was just anti the media that was attacking Trump for the wrong reasons. Right. It was one thing to say Trump wasn't conservative. Totally agreed. But some of the hits on Trump were illegitimate. And so I sort of tried to at least be objective enough to, to take out media hits on whichever candidate. I mean, I mean when, when they went after Ben Carson, for example, over the West Point thing, I was the one who really debunked the West Point story right. and that saved his candidacy at the time for what end no one really knows. And now, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm in the same place with, with Cruz because there's the, the Carson and the Trump and now the Rubio campaigns all hitting Cruz over this, this I don't know how much cursing you want on your podcast. Well, no, this, go, um, this goes out to a bunch of stations on, uh, on Terrestrial as well. So. Oh, okay, so we'll be fair here. So yeah, so the, these BS charges that the Cruz was, was responsible for voter fraud. Uh, and, and basically, it's in the not, last three It's not even well-done charges. No, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous on a legal level, okay? So Putting on the Jewish lawyer hat. On a legal level, this is absurd. And, and on a moral level, it's absurd, too. I mean, when, when the news first broke that Ben Carson was, was skipping Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina and heading to, to Florida to pick up his laundry, like there are no laundromats in Manchester, North n n n New Hampshire, you know, when, when that happened, everybody on the Internet did the same exact thing, which was, OK, his campaign's over. This is just a could you of time imagine now. if a white guy, the white privilege that would be sh bandied about if a white person went back to Florida to change clothes? <laughs> it's exactly right. If Ben Shapiro were running for office going, I'm go dra flying across the country to change clothes. It's like what, 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 your privilege is showing. I, I even I even tweeted out a, a Google map of all the Macy's in town for for Ben Carson and all the and all the dry cleaners in Manchester for Ben Carson. In case I doubt that a, the best neurosurgeon in the country has seen shops at Macy's. Though John Edwards, I don't know if you remember that John Edwards used to get these designer suits and he would he would cut out the tag and put in a fake like J C Penney tag <laughs> so he could seem like one of the people. Did you know that? Well, we know that Donald we know that Donald Trump doesn't like Macy's because Macy's banned his ties and he's tweeted that the the ties that were made in China, mind you. Correct. <laughs> so. Correct. But but it's but what's what's so absurd about this whole thing with Trump, and to get back to your original question, is that you know, I started off as kind of lukewarm on Trump, like he's hitting some of the right people, he's a hammer in search of a nail, that means sometimes he hits a nail and sometimes he hits a puppy, but as long as he's hitting a nail every so often, then better here than not. And then in the last two months, he really just started to, to go wild, not just against Cruz, which who cares, but, but, again, but against Cruz on, on non-conservative bases. So all of a sudden, Cruz was a bad guy because he wasn't in favor of quasi-universal health care. Cruz was a bad guy because he was born in Canada. Cruz is a bad guy because Cruz was too right-wing and nobody liked him in the Senate. Like, I care if somebody's liked in the Senate. Uh, and, and this I found frustrating. And as soon as I started getting critical of Trump, 
then all of a sudden I started getting exactly what, what you've been getting, which is, oh, you're a conservative. Oh, you're, you're, you're somebody who's, it, this is because you're a Jew, all your, your Jews coming out and all this stuff. And it's like, well, first of all, my Jew is always out. I mean, like I wear this thing right here, this yarmulke. I Don't take it, it off. You're going to lose your Jew powers. Well, for exactly. For those two seconds right there, I was vulnerable. But fortunately, I'm in the protection it's, of my protocols of the elders. I picture of it fortress. like a tea kettle where you take it on the steam goes out only it's pure cash <laughs> for the Jews. <laughs> that's, well, that, that, that's why I only take it off in the privacy of my own home. I don't want to share that cash. No, of course not. You and your, your secret Jew gold. Yeah, it's, it, I do feel a kinship, I think, with the, with the Jews because I've been uh, the target of so many anti-Semitic comments. I mean, not, not gay Jared <laughs> knows all the time. I'm like, well, remember that one time I did that video on U of M and the guy yelled at me as some Zionist gulag. He said, you Jew. And I said, well, I'm not Jewish. He goes, well, you look Jewish. And we didn't, it didn't make the cut because we knew that people would run with us and say it was anti-Semitic. But what I said to him, I said, like, you meet a lot of 6'3", 225 Jews, do you? That's exactly <laughs> He right. was just like, oh, Zionist gulag. I, 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 he called me a gulag, so I don't even know what and he meant. Yeah, no, yeah people, people give me the, the, the Jew thing a lot, and my, my automatic response on Twitter is yes. And then they'll say, like, Jew exclamation point. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's when you look yeah. at them and you just... You, okay. I knew the Grateful yeah, Dead like, in 1966. Who the f*** are you? That's what you say. <laughs> that, that's that's exactly right. I mean, where did you get the where did you get the first clue? Was it the name Ben Shapiro? I mean, like, could you come up with a more Jewish name? But but you're right. There is a wing of the internet that is being, I would say, forwarded by certain people on the right. And it would be interesting to talk to Milo about this. I know Milo and you and I, I think, have differences on this. Um, but there's a, there's a, a whole contingent of the alt right. I don't want to say it's the entire alt right because I don't know the entire alt right. But it's cer certainly a significant percentage of the alt-right, that the minute you turned against Trump, all of the latent anti-Semitism came out. So I was, I was sort of like the, the good Jew until I came out, until I started coming out against Trump. And the minute that happened, it was, oh, well, he's in the pay of his Zionist masters. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, all the people who pay me aren't Jewish, actually. Well, um, what was really bizarre was I did this thing on, first off, you're Jewish, okay? Hitler. Is there anything about Hitler's policies that were right-wing conservative? Yes, no. No, there's I okay, there's exactly. I just want to make sure there's someone far smarter than me has said it. I did this and I wrote about it. We talked about the eighty percent tax. We talked about the gun control, socialized health care. And so you had two responses. You had leftists who were furious saying Hitler was a Hitler was a national socialist. And you know, democratic socialism is still mob rule, which eventually right. will favor the nationalists because they're the majority, right? That's the whole problem with democracy over republic. Um so they were really mad saying Hitler was not liberal. And then there's this strong contingency of people who, of course, call me or you a conservative, who were mad because they also want to claim Hitler was not liberal and that he made Germany great again. I'm not kidding. These are actual tweets. Hitler made Germany great again. Um, it, I've never seen this before, certainly not so openly. And, and I've talked about this. I do think a big, big, big responsibility of this is from the left. The pendulum has, by its nature, had to swing further the other way. Do you think this is just sort of a natural reaction to the politically correct authoritarian speech police? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what's happened is that a lot of the people who are anti-establishment assume they're conservative because they're anti-establishment. So they look at the political correct regime that has been created, and their immediate response is, I hate those people, so I'll side with the people on the other side. But they're not necessarily on our side. I mean, they're not necessarily conservative. A lot of them are in favor of big government intervention in the economy. A lot of them are in favor of, of high trade tariffs. A lot of them are, are, are in favor of a tiny military. So I, I'm not sure what exactly is so traditionally right-wing about any of this. I mean, as far as the, the National Socialist thing and, and the Nazis being right wing, the truth is that that was a meme that was originally started by communists. I mean, if you're a communist, everybody is right wing. And so by communist lights, the Nazis were right wing because if you're on the extreme left, then anything to the right of you is right. Um, but, but, but certainly Hitler didn't consider himself a, a right winger by any stretch of the imagination. He just considered himself anti-communist. Talking about this, listen, but, Ben and I got, both were pretty young when we got started. I mean, when I was the youngest contributor ever to Fox when I was 21, um, am I allowed to say that I mean, Ben helped me with my contracts with every single entity at that point? And um, like you said, yeah, and I was a syndicated columnist when I was 17. And I know that both of us, there you go. You still want up young me. in this movie. You still want up. Uh, uh, of course, dude, come on. Uh, <laughs> but, the, the, but for both of us, this is what I was saying for, for people who were trying to hear what I was saying over the terrible commercial during the break. What I was actually saying was that you, you start off in this movement when you start off young as an ideologue, somebody who really is a true believer. And then you realize that most of the people in the movement are actually awful. And, and then you, you sort of become cynical and, and you realize so many people are just nasty and in it to make a buck. 
And then you, you think, OK, well, at election time, at least, we'll sort of get our act together. And we'll come back to, OK, we got to beat Hillary Clinton. we got to find the most conservative person who can win. We're on the same page. And then you just are disillusioned all over again. And it is massively depressing. And it's happening candidate by candidate and, and group by group. And it's, every time I think I hate the establishment more, I realize that, that I hate the media more. And then I realize that the grassroots are screwing everyone. And it's just it's, it's terrible. And I always have considered myself an anti-establishment pro-grassroots guy, and I still do, but I, I really feel like this whole thing has just turned into a massive clown show, and it's depressing. Remember when Rubio beat Christ? Oh, what yeah. a big deal that it's was? Up. That was a big anti-establishment mm -hmm. victory. And then uh, people can actually go and look at footage from years ago where I was talking to people. You know, whenever I would do stand-up comedy, they'd always open to this Q&A. And, um, I mean, I've been doing stand-up since, well, I've been doing stand-up since I was 18, so I'm before I've been doing syndicator column. But uh, now on the conservative side, people ask these Q&As, and they would go, who's the next person? And I remember for years, right, it was Bobby Jindal. Well, not for years, for months. And then it was Marco Rubio, and then it was Ted Cruz. And I would always tell them, listen, it's not the guy. There is no the guy. The guy will always change. And I remember actually about, this would have been a year and three months ago, when I was talking to an audience in Flint, Michigan, don't drink the tap water, by the way, and uh, I said, <laughs> listen, Last year, you would have said Ted, uh, Marco Rubio was the guy. And everyone goes, no, boo, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz. This is a room of about 700 people who came out to watch this show in, uh, sorry, St. Clair Shores. And um, I wonder how many of them right now would say Ted Cruz is the guy. I wonder how many of them would even admit to having said Ted Cruz is the guy. And I think it's just, it's, it does come down to a messiah complex. And I do find it somewhat ironic that the same people who claim that uh, someone like me, who is a conservative, or you, um, who actually just speak on issues, whether it's popular or not, who I, I sign my own checks. You, you're an entrepreneur. I know you work for some other companies. Um, at the same time, they call us weak conservatives, but then get mad when we speak out against someone who might be more popular. It's, it's an irony that I think is lost on them. I think that's true. I mean, and, and, it's, and it's annoying because, uh, you know, again, I've defended Trump when I thought that Trump was right, or at least when I thought he was being unfairly maligned. Uh, and I've really, I think, done my best to do this. But, you know, I don't want this to turn into a sob session. I think that it's more important to say, okay, what, where can we go sure. from here? And I, I think that, and I'll be frank with you, I am the most pessimistic person on the right side of the aisle. I am deeply pessimistic. I think that we're going to lose the election. I think that it doesn't matter who we nominate. I, I come take with that, terrible take, take the yarmulke off and see if, it, if you become more positive. Hold on one second. Let's see. Is everything bright now? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm seeing things Whoa. in a whole new light. This is, this, is this is manna, people. Why are we bitching? Is, whoa, what's... Wait, like, there's there's light in this room, and and I'm feeling sort of safe. Well, oh, no, no, things suck again. Yeah. That was... I don't know what happened there for a second. You're a no, self-loathing no, Jew, Ben. Is it the, the whole thing? Is it... The, whatever. The, the, here, here's, here's the problem. If you want to build a movement, build a movement. Right. If you want to pretend to build a movement, do what you're doing right now. Because the, the, the right keeps... The, the, they've always been like this. We run election to election. We just worry about what's right in front of us. And then we lose. And then we say, oh, well, it's just that makes it more urgent that we win the next election. So we have to get the most electable guy. We have to find the guy who's most electable. And that guy will save us. He'll ride in like, exactly. a, like Reagan on a white horse. And it, it never happens that way. Reagan rode in on a white horse. And it still didn't save the country for long. Right? I mean, he delayed sort of the inevitable slide. And, and the fact is that if you want to build a movement, then you need to start. If we have to, here, again, my pessimistic view. If we're going to lose this time, and I don't know that we are, but let's this say is, that we hold are. On a second. Let's, this let's is, this is a me. very negative what segment. What is your problem, you insensitive <laughs> asshole? Lighten it up. <laughs> okay, give us well, something well, uh, to go on here, Ben. They're looking okay. to you with the higher IQ to give them hope. The nerve. Yeah, well, the problem is, the, well, the, the reason that I have the higher IQ than everybody who's watching is because I, I don't give you hope. You know, the, the, the prophets get stoned in the temple. That's how this works. So, it, so the, 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 the bottom line here is that... <laughs> You, you need to you you do need to start from the premise that a movement needs to be built and that movement needs to be built on ideas not on temporary coalitions of power because the real quick you like this of course you do you're still here and most people click off a video in five seconds it's science we do studies unless there are boobs they click off the video in five seconds so thanks for staying click my face to go to lotterwithcrider.com where we do half a dozen news stories every single day or you may not know this is part of a full podcast a full three hour program that you can hear every week not only on radio but click the box right next to me so you can see the full live version there's also another video there i i, I don't know what that is i wouldn't risk it